The church's final doctrine stated that Jesus was God from God, but also truly human. It was a statement which immediately condemned the Gospel of Peter and the Gospel of the Ebionites to the dustbin of heresy. But there was one issue on which both heretics and orthodox were united. They all accepted that the books of the Old Testament, the Jewish Bible, was sacred. Well, almost united. There was one exception. His name was Marcion, and he was probably the greatest heretic the early church had to face. Had his opinions prevailed, the Old Testament would have ceased to exist altogether, and all traces of Jesus' Jewishness would have been obliterated from history. Marcion's ideas were so brilliant and so ruthlessly logical that he, more than any other man, began a movement which ultimately led to the loss of over 20 Gospels from history. His influence was such that he forced the early Christians to decide which books they wanted to revere and which they had to condemn. In 139 AD, a wealthy young man travelled from his birthplace on the coast of Turkey to the capital of the Roman Empire. On his arrival, he generously donated 200,000 sesterces to the fledgling Christian church, and then he set to work writing. Five years later, he unveiled two of the most compelling, distinctive and revolutionary literary productions the church had ever encountered, and they were so dangerous that they were to change the course of Christian history. But like the Gospel of the Ebionites, all physical traces of these controversial books have disappeared. The only evidence we have for their existence is once again in the writings of those who oppose them. A measure of Marcion's significance is that whilst the Ebionites are mentioned only eight times in three books, Marcion's writings are the subject of great tomes. His ideas were so radical that one early church father, Tertullian, devoted five volumes to attacking Marcion and his ideas. So what was it about his beliefs that caused such consternation? Well, unlike the Ebionites, rather than embracing the Jewishness of Christianity, Marcion utterly rejected it. And it was the radical form that this rejection took which caused such a storm. Marcion began a careful comparison of the Old Testament with the scriptures about Jesus. And what he discovered led him to a shocking conclusion. He came to believe that the gospel brought by Jesus was the good news of deliverance, involving love, forgiveness and redemption. And by way of contrast that the Jewish law was the bad news which had made the gospel necessary in the first place. And he saw that this Jewish law involves strict commandments, judgment and death. The law was given to the Jews. The gospel of life was given by Christ. But once Marcion became committed to this idea, he found himself facing a profound philosophical problem. The God of the Jews was wrathful, vengeant, 
judgmental. How could this God also be the loving and merciful God of Jesus Christ? His answer was so controversial that ultimately he would be banished from Rome for even suggesting it. In a stroke of brilliance, Marcion decided the only explanation could be that there were two gods. And after he decided this, everything else fell naturally into place. The God of the Old Testament was the creator of Genesis, who'd called the Jews to be his people and given them his law. This God also insisted that his people should be penalized should they fail to keep that law. And since everyone transgressed in some way, they would all be punished. He wasn't an evil deity, but he was scrupulously just. Marcion then concluded that the God of Jesus came into the world in order to save people from this vengeful God of the Jews. He nicknamed this God, God the Stranger, because he'd been previously unknown to us, and that Jesus came unexpectedly and did more than anyone could have hoped for. He paid the penalty for other people's sins to save us from this vengeful Old Testament deity. For the pagan Romans, the idea of two gods wasn't shocking at all, but for many Christians who were strictly monotheistic, it was a scandalous idea. And it was to arguing this concept that Marcion dedicated himself in his writing, producing two literary works to support his views. The first of these was known as the Antitheses. I went to meet Dr. Bernard Green, who studied it. Bernard, please tell us about the Antitheses. It's effectively a biblical commentary. And what he does is he takes you through the texts about Jesus and contrasts them step by step with the Old Testament. Are there any examples of this? A good example might be where Jesus heals a leper in St. Luke's Gospel. He reaches out and touches the leper and heals him. And at once Marcion contrasts this act of, of love with what it says in the book of Leviticus, that a leper is unclean and must never be touched. But it was Marcion's second literary masterpiece that was to give rise to real consternation. It was a new edition of other books. What he'd done was that he'd put together a canon of scripture, a collection of books that he felt were sacred and authoritative literature. It was the first time in Christian history that anyone had assembled a closed canon of scripture. Long before the New Testament was even dreamt of, Marcion excluded the Old Testament in its entirety, and his New Testament consisted only of the Gospel of Luke and ten letters by the early Christian convert and missionary, Paul. Why those texts in particular? Marcion feels that these are the ones that are most free of Jewish influence. For example, it's in Luke's Gospel that Jesus comes across perhaps most clearly as preaching a message of forgiveness and love, reaching out to the outcast. Why did Marcion concentrate on the works of Paul? Paul said that Christians didn't have to follow the Jewish law observing the Sabbath, the dietary regulation, circumcision. And in doing so, he set Christianity free from the commands of ancient Judaism. Marcion, reading Paul, believed that this was the key to what Christianity was truly about. 